Welcome back to Persona Q Shadow of the Labyrinth. You'll notice that I'm on the file select screen here, and that's because I wanted to show you that Gary Stu is now level 49. 49 is a very, very important level. Because I'm just going to immediately go into the Vel room because I'm really excited for this. I could get one of the most ridiculous personas what? in the game, at least in my opinion. Tam Lin. And Tan Lin is particularly ridiculous because of this skill, Myriad Arrows. Now, if you've seen my test videos for this project, you'll know how insane this skill is, but in case you haven't, let me go over it. On its own, Myriad Arrows is a very bad skill. It's six to eight light pierce attacks targeting random enemies with very low accuracy. Expect these to miss 90% of the time. However, Enemies that are agility bound, or panicked, or asleep, but agility bound or panic are preferred, can't dodge. So the low accuracy problem is moot. If the enemy is alone, the random enemy targeting is also moot, all the arrows will hit that single enemy. And add that with the fact that attack multipliers like Tarukaja, Power Charge, Shura Tensei, and Orgia Mode, all of which stack with each other by the way, apply to every individual hit of a multi-hit move, this thing can easily do tens of thousands of damage in a single turn. So, with this and the right setup, you just need to make sure that you inflict panic or agility bind on the enemy, but once you've done that, you can one-shot FOEs with this, it's really stupid. I will try to avoid doing that, unless I'm specifically showing it off, but yeah, I want to fuse Tamlin anyway because it's kind of insane. To give you an idea, I've actually beaten the strongest FOE in the game at roughly the minimum level you need to be to fuse Tamlin. It's that good. So, in order to make Tamlin, I can use... where is it? This is the combination that I'm going to be using. Kuhulan, who I will be getting out of the compendium because, um, yeah, he's still pretty good. Samael and Triglav. But before I do anything else, I'm gonna, well, one, register personas to the Compendium, because I'm gonna be sacrificing a few of them to power up Triglav before I fuse Triglav into Tam Lin. You'll see why in a moment. Obviously, I want to register you now that you have Salome's Kiss. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do a sacrifice spread. Now that I've registered them, I can safely sacrifice... So I guess I can sacrifice Thoth and Anubis to Egyptian personas, though that's not gonna give a mythology bonus or anything like that. Uh, no, in fact, I need, I, need a, I need a better sacrifice. I need Anubis, and I need Flaros. Yes, that's just barely enough for a level up on Triglav. Because by leveling up Triglav, we get Dragon Cry, which is the better version of Bestial Roar. I think you see where this is going. I'm gonna head back out and save, just on the off chance that I get a fusion accident here. Here it is, Kuhulan, Samael, and Triglav. So basically, the skill that I want to be passing down here is Dragon Cry. And then also Mataru Kaja. So with my three buff slots, I can go Dragon Cry, Mataru Kaja, Power Charge, and then uh, Shura Tensei and Orgear Mode, neither of those take up buff slots, so I can stack all five of those, and later on, Tam Lin learns a passive skill that buffs pierce attacks, so yeah, this is going to be crazy. I can also get Maraka Unda, but I kind of want to give you Double Link just to boost Bolt Link a tiny bit. I will is likely be deleting a lot of Tam Lin's skills later, though, because I really want to make his skill set focus entirely around Myriad Arrows, it's just that good. Because enemies in this game are never immune to things except instant death, so there's no enemy that's completely null to pierce attacks. Anyway, now that I've made Tam Lin, I guess I can go for Suzaku here if I want to. Unfortunately, I can't pass down Salome's Kiss. I will be buying back Alraune from the Compendium, don't worry. Binding Hand Silent Circle, I guess. And we have Suzaku, not to be confused with Phoenix, who's a much earlier persona. I mainly remember Needhog for making surprisingly adorable noises when it attacks in Digital Devil Saga. Okay, good, I remember to register you after getting Power Charge. 
Okay, just going here to sell some items so I can buy back Araune. However, we can give you the Twisted Headband because with the White Rose from You in Wonderland, the Heart Mark from the Group Date Cafe, the Syringe from the Evil Spirit Club, and the Twisted Bandana from the Inaba Pride Exhibit, by their powers combined, this is Theodore can now make... Clock hand. You'll see what that is in a moment, but first let me just sell my stuff. Ah, uh, we can get quite a lot of weapons here. At the moment, I, I'm gonna need to spend 50,000 to buy back Alraune, though. But, in weapons, if we go to Zen and Ray. Clock hand. Extremely expensive. But this weapon is incredibly strong for this point in the game. 190 power and a chance of instant death. I wonder if Impure Reach buffs that chance, actually, it might. Though you can't use skill cards on Zen and Ray, so it's kind of a moot point. They can't even get Impure Reach anyway, what am I saying? Okay, I'll get you back. And while I'm here... I haven't shown a QR code in a while, so if you want Salome's kiss, here's Alraune. I unfortunately can't... I mean, this the QR code for Tamlin is going to be kind of pointless until it loads Myriad Arrows, so I'm going to save that for now. So now we have a couple of stroll conversations. I want to do this one first, because I have a lot to say about excited girl talk. Yeah, a rare stroll with the Velvet attendants this time. Oh. I guess they're all celebrating a remix of Aria of the Soul getting into Smash. Mm. Yeah, everyone tends to bump into each other pretty Sister. commonly around here. <sighs> Once again, Theodore is reduced to Takoyaki Eren Boy. Thea. Oh, I guess siblings do take after each other. Honestly. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm fine with it at the moment. Phew. <laughs> um. There is a pretty big difference. That is true. And yeah, it really says something that the Velvet Room of the P5 protagonist is a prison. I could talk about why I think the P3 one is an elevator and the P4 one is a limousine, but that would get into spoilers. The elevator does fit with you climbing up hey. and up Tartarus, whereas with the P41 it's like you're driving on a singular path towards the truth, but don't know how far, how long it will take to get there. Honestly. So the real reason Igor isn't in this game is because his Japanese voice actor had recently passed away at the time this game came out. <sighs> I do feel kind of bad for his English voice actor though, uh, who's usually Dan Warren, because it's kind of a shame to be kind of out of work just because um, the voice actor for the original language has passed away. I see. Yes. Yeah, they all do. Unfortunately, I don't think we ever get to see Theodore fusing anything. Yeah, Marie isn't technically a Velvet Room resident, so it makes sense she doesn't know how to fuse. Mm. Now this line is actually really interesting in light of Persona 5, where it's actually the assistants who perform the fusions, not Igor. Yeah, I'm sure they... do. Now. Elizabeth, you're starting to sound like Marie there. <laughs> the first thing that came to my mind was Legion, I guess. Yeah, 
Yeah, ramen is that kind of drink that often comes in glass bottles that has that marble at the top. I actually really like that design because it stops too much of the liquid spilling out at once. I think it also means that if you tip the bottle upside down, nothing spills out due to the marble. I also think that uh, the drink called, um, is it lemonade? I know, oh, is it soda pop? I think one of the drinks in Pokemon is actually based off of ramen in the Japanese version. <laughs> hmm. Still, I doubt they'll ever make a drink based in Pokemon or any other game based off of Lemon's Lemon. An actual drink that I found in vending machines oh. in Japan that is 60% lemon juice. I probably already told that story, but on my Japan trip with my class, someone drank that and... Yeah. <laughs> the expression their face made was something to behold. I don't think I ever tried that, but maybe one day I will try <sighs> Lemon's Lemon. So yeah, maybe Igor's necessary to basically babysit all of them. Especially now that we've got Justin and Caroline in the mix. So, this one, Excited Girl Talk. Like I said, I've been waiting a long time to talk about this one. I've got a lot to say here and some of it might bleed over into the actual Labyrinth Expedition because there's a lot that I want to talk about. Hmm. <laughs> So you might immediately get what they're talking about if you're very familiar with anime and Japanese video games, but if not, they'll mention it later. <laughs> well, actually, you probably figured it out by now. They're talking about blood types. Mm -hmm. As it says there. <laughs> you're an O. <laughs> I actually don't know what blood type I am. So, the reason why they're all talking about this, and they do go into this later, is that there's actually a very common theory in Japan that blood type determines personality. Now, the actual origins of this are kind of disturbing. It's sort of linked to racial profiling and imperialism, but most people nowadays don't realise that. <sighs> and I guess points it out here. As Yukari mentions, mm. It's sort of like the equivalent of horoscopes in the West. It's... it also seems to be in surveys believed a lot more by women than by men, but I think that's true of horoscopes as well. So apparently this is quite common to get this kind of thing in Japan, so I guess I can go over where this originated from. So it started in 1927. Uh, a professor named Takeji Furukawa who didn't have very many qualifications and published a paper studying blood type and the correlation between blood type and personality. However, he only surveyed 11 people and they were all his immediate family. So obviously it was not a very proper scientific survey. <laughs> the thing that I was talking about is that, is that at the time, Furukawa found that 41.2% of the Taiwanese people who Japan had recently invaded were Type O. At the time, they were resisting invasion and were rebelling against the occupying forces, and so he was like, oh, obviously their blood type is what's making them rebellious. Instead of, you know, maybe people don't like their country being invaded? So, that's kind of how it started. It faded for many years, but then it resurged in the 1970s uh, for a book by Masahiko Nomi, a journalist with no medical background whatsoever and no psychological background whatsoever, and yeah, it's been dismissed as pseudoscience by pretty much everyone, but it's still pretty common in pop culture to this day in Japan. Which is why a lot of Japanese media will list characters' blood types, uh, anime, video games. Some Fire Emblem fans might already know this, but back in Fire Emblem 7 with the tactician creation, you could choose blood type, and blood type was a factor in determining affinity, uh, in addition to birth month in the Japanese version. The English version removed that because blood type's not as significant to Western culture, but that led to a little bit of a plot hole, because there are a lot of pairs of twins in the Elub games, like Linus and Lloyd and Lou and Rye, who have different affinities. You'd think if it was just birth month that determined affinity, then they'd have the same, but no, blood type also determines affinity. Hmm. So this is actually kind of interesting. There are no blood type A's on the Persona 3 and 4 parties, however there are on the Persona 5 party. 
both Makoto and Haru are Type A's. I know that because I have the art book. Well, at least one Persona character before 5 was a Type A. Ray's blood type was important. Remember that for later. Sheesh. Yeah, Zen is really, really clueless about things. Apparently, there used to be machines in Japan, like public machines, that let you determine what your blood type was, but those quickly disappeared when people realized that shared needles were a terrible idea. Apparently, dogs have over 13, though I'm only going off of Wikipedia, so that might not be accurate. Uh, by the way, dogs have universal donors and universal recipients. Yeah, I'm pretty sure vets need to know that kind of information. Dog blood types are actually quite complicated. Cats only have three blood types, A, B, and AB. And apparently, type A is more common in American cats, and type B is more common in Australian cats. I wonder if my cats are type B. What? And horses have eight blood types, seven that are commonly recognized, and an additional eighth called type T that is mainly used for research purposes. Horses also have what's called allergic factors, and each blood group can have at least two, which means there are over 400,000 possible combinations for horse blood type, which means you can accurately tell specific horses and their parentage by their blood, which is probably interesting to racing enthusiasts. Yeah, I did a lot of research on this because I found this really interesting. No, please, let's not get a blood sample of Koromaru. That'd be a terrible idea. Um... Well, yeah, stating the obvious. What? <laughs> <laughs> she has to say it three times. Yeah, sorry if that went on for a bit long, but uh, I... I'm, I find that really, really interesting, so... I wanted to talk about that for so long. I thought that conversation was in the third dungeon, but no, it's in the fourth. But anyway, time to set up the party. Who is going into the labyrinth this time? I need at least somebody with light, so maybe... Maybe Ken. <clears throat> okay, here are the personas that I've gone with. Shinjiro has Genbu. He's going to be more of the tank here. Chie has Tam Lin. Akihiko has Kuhulun because he's faster, which will mean that links work better. You still have Black Frost, Ken has Alraune for the additional SP, although Salome's Kiss is very, very expensive. Uh, I want to try that at least once, but yeah, we'll see how that goes. And Rise still has Navigator Persona. Matsuri ni ikimashou! So, the entrance to this floor gets us pretty close to where we need to go, thank you shortcut, but I'm actually going to be taking a different shortcut this time, and you'll see why in a Let's moment. Go. Basically, I'll be covering some Looks optional like areas way. of this floor now, and it actually has quite a lot of optional areas. This way. Oh crap! The FOE saw us! So, I'm going to be heading to the fire here. And to do that, it's best to approach from the top. Looks like that FOE isn't coming after us anymore. His presence. You might also notice, uh, I didn't FOE? mention it last time, but... They only move three spaces per step when they're chasing you, otherwise they move one. Here's the thing, I need to get past these two fast guys and get to a shortcut there with fire. Now, doing this is a lot more awkward than it looks. I need to lure them in a very specific way. Because otherwise, they'll just run right into the corner like that. And obviously, that is bad. Two enemies! They're strong, so look out! I got enough muscle brains to deal with an Aki. <laughs> that's, that, that's pretty good. I don't think I've actually heard him say that line before. Aki Ko and Shinjiro have a lot of good interactions in battle, but I, I think I've actually missed a lot of them. In this run. Kenku's asleep. There'll be trouble if he gets attacked now. Mom. <sighs> did, did he just say mom? Wow, that's uh, tragic if that's the case. FOE.
Okay, I went that way. Good. So I can actually get in here. Huh? There's something strange about that wall over there. So there are two shortcuts here. One we can go through, one we can't go through. But if we go through the one we can go through, we can light this like bonfire. Isn't coming after us anymore. This is actually a dead end, but it's important that you get this bonfire lit, because it's the only way to light it. You have to light it from this side. There is also a side quest trigger in here. There are three enemies. I suppose I can demonstrate Salome's kiss here. And that got all three of them. I love the way that animation looks if you do get all three. That just kind of multicolored set of chains around the enemy. And the way they all overlap like that. I just think it looks pretty cool. Anyway, new persona. And it's Seru again. We won, but... Okay, I'm gonna do something weird. I'm gonna actually go here, get this event, and then I'm gonna um, immediately leave. Doesn't that area look a little suspicious? I'll ex well, actually, I can explain why now. See that second shortcut that's currently only one way? We'll be accessing that from below eventually, and... It'll just be more convenient to get back here on the second visit if I go back and accept the quest now. And yeah, that's a oh nice God, I can't believe you. image. Yeah, that's not why it's disturbing, though. Hmm, but you know... Hey! What is it? I'm dead tired. Huh? Hee hee hee! Teddy, just because this labyrinth is a sauna that is full of buff FOEs does not mean it is Kanji's labyrinth. What's up, punk? <laughs> hey, wait! So, without we unlock a request, and it's another one of those where you just have to go back to the same area you originally examined. So, let's go ahead and use a Goho ho and more. I believe this quest also requires you to have both Kanji and Junpei in your party. So let's go ahead and accept that. I don't think I need to heal. But I might as well unload my items at Theodore's. Growth 3. Actually, that's a very, very good reward. This quest is... <laughs> I also remember this one leads to a very good conversation from Elizabeth after you finish it. There is a time limit. So let's go ahead and do the stroll and see who we have to take to that same spot. Which is actually a very awkward spot to access, so this is one of those few go back to the same place you went to before requests that I'm kind of okay with because getting back to that specific spot is easier said than done. Because even the other shortcut that leads there is kind of one way. <laughs> That's a weird noise. <laughs> That's a very good line from Kanji there. Yeah, Kanji remembers where that one was. I've already marked it though. I see. What's up? <laughs> I'm actually not entirely sure what a happy looks like. I'm actually going to go ahead and look that up now. Okay, it's really just that kind of Japanese coat they often wear at festivals. Granted, they're usually open in the chest area, and that's probably why Junpei is mentioning it there. Um. But they're often worn over something else, so it's not like that usually matters. Uh, what is that piece of armor that's male exclusive in Persona 3 that's kind of that kind of reminds me of that? I forget exactly what it's called. The one that has a different kanji on the back, depending on what character you have it equipped to. But anyway... And Shinjiro is sort of close too, so he's gonna get replaced by kanji. Yeah, you have to bring kanji to this.
And back in we go. So we'll be dealing with that request on the way. It'll probably be the last thing we do in this expedition. Because, like I said, this expedition is going to cover a lot of optional areas. Well, uh... Speaking of optional areas, I'll be covering this door first. Both of these non-fire doors lead to the same place. And I'm going to get fire before I go in, because there are quite a few fast guys patrolling these hallways. As you can see, there's one right there. Look out. We're being chased by an FOE. And we can back it into this corner, but this shortcut break through that wall here is unfortunately Let's one way. And I will need to cover that corner in Fire's order to 100% the map for this floor, so I'm going to have to come back later and lure that FOE away. It's not actually that hard to do, you just need to provoke it into chasing you and then come back later. Kanji's confused! Wake up, Miranji! Uh, what? What was I fighting? And there's the Miranji line, I think this is the first time we're hearing that. Well, I'm kind of glad you hit yourself. You have a lot of attack power, so you hitting anyone else would have been really bad. Still getting mileage out of that Panic Sword, we found that a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Scram. <laughs> wow, he did that even while he was panicked. <laughs> How was that? Oh, he doesn't have a persona. Let me just fix that quickly. Did that while panicked and without having a persona. That's pretty impressive. Actually, let's try Garuda to cover your wind weakness. Oh crap! There's an FOE coming right at us. That's one. Uh, that is blocked for now. Got another the one here, out. and we have no fire, and we're trapped between two of them. Okay then. Uh, so this is where Goba K more is useful. Some of the comments mentioned that in Etrian Odyssey, they're generally not very generous with those kind of items. In fact, apparently there's no equivalent to an infinite use, I believe it would be Ariadne's Thread. But yeah, I don't think there is an infinite use Ariadne's Thread. Uh, sometimes called a Warp Wire, but I don't think there's an infinite use uh, equivalent of that, that in the series. Right and yeah, if you go through this door, that one sees you from all the way over there, and it starts coming after you, so having fire is pretty useful. Gonna lose this fire very soon, and that's There's where something strange about that wall. Going through here Let's was useful. Of course, they can't chase you through a solid wall. Well, it's not solid to us, but it's solid to them. And luring them this way lets you step in here for floor completion. However, if you are gonna do this, make sure you have at least a Goho M, but preferably go back here. Because getting stuck between a wall and a fast guy is not a good place to be. I may have done that uh, on my first playthrough of this game, and uh, it did not end well at all. If I was going to make a music video to the song I made for the Fast Guys, oh, no. at the part that with FOE's Isn't It Sad, this, Is This How It All Ends, it would be uh, getting stuck against that specific wall. Okay, so we're going to lose fire here. At around this point, it's pretty much inevitable that you'll run into these guys, and I think I've lured that guy the wrong way, in fact, because now, yeah, he's going to be stuck in front of where I need to go. Already getting so much mileage out of that item. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we want to provoke this is one and then use the shortcut us? to get around the other fast guy without provoking the him into chasing gone, us. Huh? And now he can easily get in here, however one of them is still chasing uh, us. Except box. he's now blocked! So, uh, yeah, I'm just picturing those two having a conversation like, Hey, hey bro, the little dudes ran that way, get out of my way! And the other guy's like, No man, this is my flexing spot, get your own! But all that for Sizzlin' Happy. Unfortunately, we can't turn this into Elizabeth to complete her request, but it's actually a very good piece of equipment. And Kanji doesn't even have anything equipped, so we might as well take this for now. 218 defense and an increase in endurance and luck. I normally like giving that to Ken, but uh, again, Kanji had nothing equipped. Because yeah, I wasn't expecting to bring him this dungeon visit. I forgot that it had to be both Junpei and Kanji in your party for that uh, quest. And once again... Also, go back a more reset your encounter meter as well, which uh, gives it a secondary use. So, 
So through this Let's fire go. door is kind of a weirdly shaped room, but I think there's a good reason why this room is shaped this way. Damn. It ensures fire. that the fire will always go out before you step through this door. And that's intentional to ensure that you don't find out how this next FOE, who's behind this door, reacts to fire too early. Yep, even when used by someone like Kanji, Mamuro is overpowered. I can't wait to talk about Daifumi and Samsara in this game because I find them useless in a way <laughs> that skills generally don't tend to be useless. Also, I think that's the first time we've, we've heard Kanji's fast battle completion quote, probably because he's generally not one for finishing battles quickly. But anyway, through this door, we have another FOE. Yep, those images we put in Ray's head about guys oh, wow. in loincloths carrying a Mikoshi. Crap. They've come to fruition here. This is not just any FOE. It is, in my opinion, one of the most brutal in the game, along with the old doll. This one may even be worse than the old doll in some respects. <laughs> Neat, and this is its actual name, by the way, the Festival Dudes. Might be one of my favourite FOE names in the game, but... Contrary to its name, this thing is not to be taken lightly at all. Kanji is very much correct. What's up, punk? Cut it out. Yeah, Mitsuru is right. You can get a good view of them by moving the camera up here. So the way this FOE works is that they take a turn to wind hey, up. I see an FOE. And then on the next step, they all take a step forward. Wind up, step forward. So that's how they work. But you want to be very, very careful. For example, I can't take a step forward here or they would hit me. This is one FOE that you do not want to run into under any circumstances at all. Also, yeah, I do not want to move left or right because that would... Any space that's passed over by one of them will count as running into them. Yeah, at this point I can't actually explore um, those two tiles up there. Can certainly go for these ones though. You can also see them change direction when they're about to jump. So bear that in mind. But like I said, you really, really, really do not want to run into this FOE. This thing has an AoE physical attack that hits your entire party, and if it if they use it, and they will use it on the first turn, trust me, you're pretty much dead. This thing is the reason why I brought Vanish Balls. Because if you run into it, you pretty much need to use one or you will die. So, pay very, very close attention to where you're stepping when you're in a room with one of those things. Now, through here is the rest of the floor. Through here is entirely optional content. The floors are starting to get a little bit non-linear at this point, but I'm going to need to take on some of the optional content here. Stepping, uh, setting foot into this room immediately has that FOE start pursuing you. Oh, okay, the Cyclopses can protect the rest of the group. Interesting to know, but I'm going to have to get out of this battle immediately because the FOE is going to join it right now, so I don't think I'm going to get any experience from this unless I get insanely lucky for some reason. Also, one of the few things besides Zen and Ray who can use Bane Slice. Because right now... Yep, thought so. We need to run. Here. Might go for a renewal or actually. Because that will kick in at the beginning of the turn, so even if one of my boosted characters escapes, I'll still get the healing. There we go. I don't think I have the energy to keep this up. 
Through this door, though, We've successfully run away from the FOE. we have fire. If we'd come here before getting past these two FOEs and lighting this torch, we would have... This torch would not be lit, and so... That'd mean we'd have to go all the way back there. So that's why I did that first. You can't light this torch from the bottom side, only oh, the top crap. side. There's an FOE coming right at us! Unfortunately, though, getting through here is easier said than done. I think I can smash through that wall. You want me to try? Well, unfortunately, there's a giant buff guy in the way, so we need to lure that guy out of the way so that we can get through there. That's going to be our goal. Oh no, an FOE's here! Hey, we're busy! <laughs> I like your face reaction to that. Okay, so right now I might be able to show something off. See, I completely forgot about this before, but preemptive strikes work with these things the same way they work with other FOEs. If the FOE hits you from behind, they get an automatic preemptive strike. So, I know this thing is going to catch me now, but if I back away from it while facing it, it shouldn't get a preemptive. Yeah, there we go, no preemptive. You shouldn't try to fight this one. An enemy like that isn't fair. The thing is, it doesn't really matter anyway, because... It's still, it's still incredibly fast, so it tends to get the first turn regardless. Ran out of energy? <laughs> like I'm gonna get caught that easily. <laughs> Jim has some pretty good reactions to pursuing FOEs. I didn't really realize oh, no. that before. That FOE's coming after us. Oh, of course you'd go in there. Uh, I can at least take this time to Fire's explore this gone. corner. Wonder what number I roll. <laughs> well, uh, given that you're Junpei, you'll probably be a one. Though your scale would probably transcend time and space and manage to roll a zero with how bad his luck is. I actually think the best way to, of course, now that I want an encounter, the encounter meter is rising very slowly. But I think the best way to get those two spaces is to have these guys move during a battle. Because I can't see any way to step on those two spaces as things are now. So I'm going to intentionally stall in a battle for a little bit. This one's Actually, strong. that's new! Yeah, bring it on. The Rainleg Musha. This thing, as you'd probably guess by its name, was a rainy day shadow in Persona 4. Rainleg Musha is weak to ice and resists slash and wind. So, this thing is going to be... So this is going to be a pretty good thing to test out... Not really sure what I'm going to have time to do here, actually. A uh, pretty good thing to test out Icy Paradise against. I suppose you can try and use Rag and Cry, even though I don't think it'll matter. Just use Mabufu first. It is vulnerable to instant death, so you can just straight up hover on it, but I want to give this thing a chance to show off some things it can do. It or use Salone's Kiss and just have it not do anything at all. Okay, we didn't get the Strength Bind portion of that, but we did get the other two. It's pretty rare that you fail to get all three binds with that. It's kind of like Debilitate for, for, for binds, although, you know, the individual components that can fail, unlike with Debilitate. <laughs> Blade of Fury, thankfully, only targets one row. That one's weak against ice, okay? And no one is having any comments here. But now I can go for Icy Paradise, boosted by Mataru Kaja. You call for a hero? And I'll also get additional damage from Bolt Link. More additional damage, thanks to Dragon Cry. Yeah, that does quite a lot to things that are weak to it. And more Bolt Link. Links are really fun to use. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Square. <laughs> and Samurai defeated by Chair to the face. That was a crazy fight. But hey, we beat him. Uh, that wasn't really that crazy. Okay, Sorry. they're gonna jump down we one. Back. Okay, good. I, c I can actually get in there. 
you have to do some complicated uh, things like uh, wasting time and encounters in order to uncover those two spaces. Not sure if they count for the 100% completion chest, but I don't want to take any chances. This way. And now it's time like to FOE lure these guys us. around. And here we have to do this. Like I said though, there isn't really much point in pre preventing them from getting preemptive strikes because they just go first no, anyway. You shouldn't try to fight this one. An enemy like that isn't As fair. demonstrated. Of course, if you're a lot higher level, you might get the first strike against them, but at this point, they're a Sorry. bit too fast for us. We, head back. we will soon, don't worry. Okay. Oh, There's an FOE coming right at us. Uh, now it's a matter of luck. Which direction will you go in? Of course, you go that way. Oh no, that FOE's coming after us. Okay, there we go. That should do it. The fire's gone out. Just in time. Ta-da! A treasure box! So, you see why I wanted to set up my visits to this dungeon? So that I'd be able to get this side quest completed now, rather than needing another trip through that room. I really do not like that room. But for now, we get a fan for Yukiko. I believe this fan inflicts curse, which is not really the best, but... Uh, it's something, at least. I mean, it's got a pretty good backstory, at least. It looks like the foey stopped chasing us. The foey. Anyway. Through there. Through there. Is it an FOE? Oh, right. Yeah, that shortcut down uh, right here is not the most convenient shortcut out there. Attention! Well, by everywhere we mean just three steps ahead of us. Well, three steps and an encounter. We're unstoppable! Sorry, but can we head back? Well done. Yes, we all did a splendid job and find this one place that we already found before. But if only we had the foresight to take this with us last time. Although, yeah, someone was already wearing it. <laughs> huh? Yeah, yeah, I know, but... Well, uh... We have kind of a weird oh, case right. of a Chekhov's gun here. Surprise Kanji remembers this, but remember the watering can from all the way back in New in Wonderland? We can use that to wash this thing. <sighs> what? <sighs> Not really sure if this is, you know, as good as, you know, using an actual washing machine. Or, you know, actual soap, but it'll do. Right, and that's a wrap. We get manly happy. Yeah. Uh. Hey now. While we're here, though, just before going back, we can progress a little bit further forward in the floor and open up a shortcut back here. Specifically, this shortcut. So, I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then I'll leave the rest of this floor for next time. But yeah, the majority of this part has been optional contents. <laughs> this is the best feeling! I do find it interesting they're adding more and more optional areas Sorry. to these labyrinths. It's this way. Don't worry, Akihiko will restore your SP soon. <laughs> Looks like we have an FOE on our hands. Just after we get past the festival dudes. I'm going on ahead. Who, by the way, I always imagined talking in a surfer voice, although I'm really not good at doing surfer Go voices, me. but I guess I can try. Oh, it's a power sponge! Sup, bruh? We're the festival dudes! We're like totally gonna kill you, man. Anyway, that's the best I've got. But yes, that is always how I picture them sounding. <laughs> this is currently the most screwed iron dice in the world. Everyone who is boosted has electric attacks. I do not envy it right now. We're done. I 
I think I already had you. Actually, you're pretty the low level compared to the other personas gone. we could get in this floor. And we've already run out of item space. I ran out of energy. Just a little further. Doesn't that wall look a little different from the others? Oh right, there may be a secret passage here. Damn. There's but we can't actually here. pass through this side of the wall. And if we do continue to go that way, we'll actually have a pretty significant a root exclusive cutscene. So, I think I'll leave the rest of this floor for next time. Yeah, I, I forgot. I was using a map that I prepared earlier that had already opened up that shortcut. So, let's head back and report the requests. And then we will hopefully finish up exploring the second floor of the Inaba Pride exhibit. Let's heal first. And then... It's worth a lot of experience too. Oh. Um, you two, please, please, please get out. We, we don't want this going on here, actually. Gary Stewart has an ulterior motive here. Uh, he thinks he's the only one who's allowed to see his wife wearing this. <laughs> you have my gratitude. I, I, you know, damn it. No. Huh? Yep. She wants it for Igor. Yeah. So, Junpei gets some karma for that. Good luck getting what? that image out of your head. That'll teach you for mentally cheating on Chidori. <laughs> yeah, she's thinking of turning Igor into a Tengu. This will be your reward. But growth 3 is going to be a very good reward. Unfortunately, we can't equip it before this experience uh, gets given to us. I succeeded in bettering myself. Okay, that's going to be useful. His elemental skills were really starting to lose their edge, so that's good. That's going to buff them up uh, quite a bit. No, 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 I almost, that would have been the worst way to have a failed channel, accidentally dropping the growth 3. We can, I believe, buy that, but not for much, much, much later into the game. As in, I believe it's the reward for the final 100% map completion chest, so... Yeah, glad I didn't throw away that one. That would have been really awful. While I'm here, I can actually go ahead and equip that on you immediately, because I actually want that on him right now. Experience plus 100%, i.e. doubled, even if you're not in the party. So that's a pretty useful item for grinding. At the moment, though, we only have one, so we'll only be able to grind a specific huh. character with it. And so, next time, we will continue the Inaba Pride Exhibit Night 2 and hopefully finish it off. So, see you then.